Good morning. Today we have our second resurrection egg. Do you want to see what's inside? I do. It's pink. There's something in there. So let's open it up and see. There's silver coins in there. Silver coins. Now what part of the story has to do with silver coins? Well, let's look in the scripture and see what the Bible has to tell us. So grab your Bible, grab your soap book, grab a pen or pencil, or you can just listen. So I've already got my glasses on, so I can read in Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Let's see what some silver coins have to do with this story. Then one of the twelve one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for the opportunity to hand him over. Judas is making a bad decision. Let's keep going in Matthew. Let's jump down to Matthew 26, 46 through 50. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer, Judas, had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the man stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. This isn't a happy story. This is a sad story. Judas betrayed Jesus. So let's look at this, these two scripture passages and see if we can find some observations. Going back to Matthew 26, 14 through 16, let's see. Judas went to the chief priest, what are you willing to give me? Judas went to the chief priest and asked what they were willing to give him. Judas was thinking about doing something wrong. So if he was thinking about it, his heart wasn't right. And maybe in his heart, we don't know for sure why Judas did what he did. But he didn't believe that Jesus was who he was. So his faith wasn't right. His heart wasn't right. And he started to think wrong thoughts. And then he started to act on those thoughts. And he first went to the chief priest. And he said, what will you give me? So I think the first observation is Judas's heart wasn't right. Judas didn't believe. Let's write that down. That's a, that's a powerful reminder. And let's see. So his heart wasn't right. He didn't believe. He started to do wrong things, wrong actions. And that led him to... He went right to Jesus. He brought them in. He went right to Jesus and he kissed him. And that's what he told the men. The one I kissed, that's him. That's Jesus. Take him. How very sad. So Judas acted on his wrong thoughts. His heart was wrong. His thoughts were wrong. He had wrong actions. We learned back in the armor of God that the battle's not in front of us. The battle's in our heart. See, Judas lost the battle when he didn't believe that Jesus was who he was. He lost his faith. He began to think wrong things. And then he did wrong things. It's not good. It's sad. You know, when we see people that are doing wrong things, Let's not get upset about what they do. Let's pray for their heart. 
because God really needs to get a hold of their heart. See, Judas went to the high priest and he asked, and they said, 30 pieces of silver we'll give you. Do you know 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave? Judas betrayed Jesus for the price of a slave. It, it tells us that his heart was really in a bad place, that he was thinking really bad thoughts. So today, if your heart's in a bad place, and you're thinking thoughts, what are we supposed to do? Well, let's make some application. So maybe we're thinking about doing something wrong. What should we do? Should we remember the scripture? Well, that's what Jesus did. When Satan came to him to tempt him, he quoted scripture. And the Bible says, Thy word, the Bible, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you or sin against God. That's why our scripture is important. So let's think about this. Our verse is Colossians 3.10. Putting on our new nature, renewing our mind to learn to know our creator and become like him. Judas wasn't putting on his new nature. He wasn't renewing his mind when bad thoughts came. He wasn't learning more about, and he was right with Jesus. And he didn't know who God was. If he had, his heart would have been different. His thoughts would have been different. And his actions would have been different. So when we get a bad thought, or we're sad in our hearts, we need to renew our mind in our heart with the scripture, with the power of God's word. So that's a good application. Another one, sometimes we may not know what scripture to read. So we can ask our moms and our dads to help us and say, hey, I'm sad today. And you may not even know why. But don't let that sadness sit there. Ask Jesus to help you. Ask your moms and dads to help you. And they will. And Jesus will. Because he promised he would. The Bible says, what time I'm afraid I will trust in him. We know that verse. One of my favorites is in Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The, 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 the chapter goes on to say that God doesn't ever sleep. He's never off duty. He's always awake. He's always watching over me. So I can lay down and go to sleep knowing that God is watching me. And that helps my heart to be in the right place. Helps my thoughts to be in the right place. So when I get sad or discouraged or want to do something wrong, I have to remember to put on that new nature. I have to remember to think the right thoughts and, and put the right things in my mind. Judas forgot to do that. And it led him to a very sad action. So let's remember not to do what Judas did, but to do what's right. To seek God. To read his word. To pray. And to seek help from those around us. The Bible says bear one another's burdens. That means to share our burdens with each other. So that we can encourage each other and point each other back to Christ. So if you see someone who's sad today, why don't you encourage them? Give them a kind word. Tell them you're praying for them. Reach out and help them. Because that will help them turn their heart to the right place. It will help them to begin to think right thoughts. It will help them to make better choices and do right actions. We can be an agent for change. We can help those around us have a better day. So as we think about today's scripture, Judas' heart was wrong, his thoughts were wrong, and his actions were wrong. They were a reflection of what was in his heart. So if we're having a bad day, let's check on our thoughts, let's check on our hearts. And if we find that our heart's sad, we need to renew our minds with the power of God's word. We need to put on that new nature so we can think about him, learn to know him, and become more like him. Let's make that our prayer today, to become more like Jesus. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the promises in your word. And we thank you that you love us. You love us so much that you want us to be more like you. You want us to renew our hearts, renew our minds, so that we can make a difference in the lives of others, and we can be part of your family. 
And we thank you, Lord, for that. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.